So when people hear Pennsylvania Dutch, I think a lot of people think Dutch as in the Netherlands, mm, but yes. that's not... No, myth, myth. <laughs> Hey everybody, what's up? It's Kelly again. Welcome back to my channel. I am sitting with Doug Maddenford and Misha, my boyfriend. Doug, if you want to introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah, I'm Doug. Uh, check out my YouTube channel all about Pennsylvania Dutch stuff, language, culture, uh, history, you name it. It's there. <laughs> and Misha, do you want to introduce yourself? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> Misha comes from the uh, East Germany, the Manberg area, so his dialect from there will come into play as we go through this video because today we're going to talk about the Pennsylvania Dutch language which is known as Pennsylvania Dutch and Doug do you want to explain a little bit about the origin? Sure. So the language itself uh, was brought over to the colonies in 16 late 1600s early 1700s by uh, immigrants coming from the Rhineland Palatinate, the, the area of Hessen, Baden-Württemberg, all along that Rhine River Valley there and it was mainly comprised of Pelzisch speakers who brought this dialect here and when we got here in that time period we kind of set up a, a, a language island we, we cut ourselves off from the English that were here and somehow by the grace of God for 300 years our language we kept speaking it um, I was talking to Kelly earlier that you know most immigrant groups when they come to the United States first generation keeps the language but then their children usually don't learn it assimilate fully assimilate with English but for whatever reason we stubborn Pennsylvania Dutch were like no the language is important we're gonna keep it and 300 plus years later we're still speaking it so so when people hear Pennsylvania Dutch I think a lot of people think Dutch as in the Netherlands mm, but yes. that's not no myth myth <laughs> uh, and it all has to do with what the word Dutch meant in the early 1700s in English uh, this is a, a, a big myth is that oh it's Deutsch and the English people heard the word Deutsch and they're like oh they must be Dutch well that's not true um, so in 1700s era English the word Dutch referred to any group that came from Germanic speaking Europe there was no Germany in 1700. There was all, you know, Holy Roman Empire, all these little kingdoms and dukedoms. There was no Germany, and there really was no Netherlands either yet. There was, you know, they were broken up between the Spanish and, and there was a whole, you know, all that history there. So there was no term Germans. Um, so there was no reason to call us that. So, but Dutch was what the English called anybody from that region of Europe. It stuck. And that's what we were called, so we kept using that term. And now today, of course, well, there is a Germany and there's a Netherlands, and now that definition of the word Dutch has changed in English, but we haven't changed it. It's, that's who we are, so. And I know when I talk to Misha about the German language, he always tells me about how much it's evolved over, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, but even very recently, there have been a lot of, you know, changes in the way that Germans speak or the terms they use and so mm -hmm. has Pennsylvania Dutch evolved? Yes and no, you know languages are a living entity they change you know time society history changes them but we've been kind of a weird case because we were broken off from where our mother language was spoken so when we left the, that 1600 era German that we spoke is what we brought and came to a country that not everybody spoke that language so there wasn't an influence you know as times change as new things were invented where back in Germany you know they came up with German words for those things we didn't because mm -hmm. we were broken away from that so sometimes today when you hear people speaking Pennsylvania Dutch you will hear a lot of English words mixed in uh, and mainly those are words that are inventions post 1700 um, so the language changes and since there's no official formal education in the language also grammar rules exist but people don't follow them very well mm. because there's nobody really teaching them oh you gotta say it this way or you know it was, ne it was never taught in school it was never taught in school so a lot of Pennsylvania Dutch speakers like my grandparents they can speak it fluently but they can't read or write in it Okay. So, I mean, it was an oral language more than anything else. The idea of literature in our language didn't really happen until the late 1800s. Oh, that recently. When people first started writing it down. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And earlier in the first video ma we made, uh, you mentioned that the Bible that the mm -hmm. Pennsylvania Dutch will use is written in German. Standard and so German. They, so they learn German purely so that they can understand the scripture. Yeah, and like church services throughout Pennsylvania up until really World War I era, um, you still could go to church and the service would be in standard German. 
Okay. Even though you had all these old Pennsylvania Dutch farmers sitting there that necessarily couldn't read or write in standard German, but that's how they used that for the liturgy. So the readings would come out of the Luther Bible, um, the prayers would be done in, in, in standard German. Um, now that changed with the World Wars, which we can talk about, I guess, if you want to later on. But yeah, so I mean, that's, yeah. That was a bad ending there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they know some German for this purpose, mm -hmm. um, but for all you know, intents and purposes, it's yeah. different from Pennsylvania Dutch. Absolutely. When a when a German today comes to visit the Pennsylvania Dutch here in Pennsylvania, uh, and they speak German to them, standard German, most Pennsylvania Dutch will have a really hard time understanding them. If they come from that pocket of Germany where we came from, and they speak dialect, then it goes a lot easier. But if you have someone from the east coming, it's my, my parents and grandparents wouldn't understand what he had to say. Okay. They wouldn't. And reverse the same, you know, which we'll, we'll test him here in a couple of minutes. Yeah, so Doug knows both German and Pennsylvania Dutch. Obviously, he knows English as well. A little bit. Little <laughs> but bit. I, I brought Misha into this video because I thought it would be really interesting for you guys to see someone speaking Pennsylvania Dutch to someone speaking German and how much y'all can understand each other. This is something I've been really interested okay. in knowing. And uh, months ago when I was talking to Misha about you know the Amish, I brought up some Pennsylvania Dutch words and their mm -hmm. translation to English okay. and see if he could understand some mm -hmm. of the Pennsylvania Dutch. And there were some similarities in the roots of the words that I remember. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I think it would be fun if maybe Doug says something in Pennsylvania Dutch to Misha and see if Misha can understand it and sure. we'll go from there. Sure. So uh, let's start with like some basic elementary words. You ready? Um, yeah. I'll say the word in <laughs> Pennsylvania Dutch and you give the English. How's that sound? Or oh. give the standard German for it. We'll figure All right. it out. Oh, All right. let's, let's I'll try. start off with a s slow pitch here. Okay. Hund. Yeah, that's a dog. Yeah. I even knew that yeah, one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> house. Yeah, that's a house. Okay. Yeah. Shire. Uh, Shire, huh? Uh huh. Sounds like uh, the uh, Shire from uh, Tolkien. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> they live. Uh, no hobbits there. No. 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 A Shire. Ah, uh, I'll pass. I think. So the standard German word is Scheune. Oh, yeah. What's that? All mean? right. Uh, that's uh, yeah, a barn. A barn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. One thing that so if you if you come from the Palatinate or the Pfalz, this will all make sense to you because their dialect there makes that where a lot of times, this is a generalization, but where a lot of times in standard German you have an EU sound, Scheune, mm -hmm. that got changed to a EI sound, or that, that was the sound that they tended to use. So that, that's just a little side note. Um, okay, how about a phrase? You ready? A phrase? Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Shoot. My Bruder springt Starik. Okay, my, uh, my brother jumps. Staric is a word I, I yeah. have trouble with. Uh, mm. So I guess, um, I don't know. Um, I'm lost here. Yeah, and here's a false cognate. Springe in Pennsylvania Dutch means to run, not to jump. <gasps> All right. <laughs> so my bruder springt staric means my brother runs fast. Oh, okay. Staric is fast or oh, strongly. Stark is yeah, I was like. Uh, uh, going for uh, uh, going in that direction, but it wouldn't make yeah. any sense on that phrase. Yeah, right. so yeah like with the spring, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a different. The verb to jump in Pennsylvania Dutch is chumpa, mm -hmm. so you can hear that English influence a little bit there. Interesting. Yeah, chumpa. And you're saying stark is is German for strong, yeah. right? And you're saying stark. Stark. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. My daughty hut can do walk me. Can I hear that one more time? <laughs> yeah, sure. My daughty hut can do walk me. Uh, yeah. I, I won't be, uh, be able to help you with that one. Uh, I think it's my daughter, maybe? Mm. Well, well, then I'm completely lost. <laughs> so, my daughty hut can do walk me. Mein Vater hat kein mehr Tabak. All right, my my dad doesn't have any tobacco anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So Dotty is dad. Dotty, yeah. We do have the word father, but a lot of Pennsylvania Dutch will use the word Dotty. Hmm. Mommy, the mommy and the Dotty. Huh, that's mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, it's closer to English than well, father. I guess it's pretty like father. Pretty close to yeah. <laughs> so never mind. Because <laughs> remember, English is a Germanic-based language. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> 
Does that scare you when I speak that dialect? <laughs> no, no, it's just, I'm just confused. Yeah, <laughs> I'm <laughs> sitting here not quite understanding what you're saying. No, sure. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've traveled through a lot of regions of Germany. I've pretty much been all over the country, and I know what regions I can safely speak in dialect in, and I know people will understand me or at least get most of it. And then I know where there's no chance, in, you know, snowball's chance in hell that I can <laughs> use it. Like, if I travel to the region where, where you're from, I know that it, it, it would be stupid for me to try and speak dialect, and then I just switch into... Hochdeutsch, and then I should be, usually I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, well, it's nice that you know both. So. <laughs> yeah, it helps, it helps, it helps. <laughs> oh, so do you have any questions for Doug regarding, like, how they have worked the language or the differences between German and Pennsylvania Dutch? Um, so when I was uh, walking around uh, 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 and we went to a Amish grocery store, mm -hmm. I heard some uh, people talking and it sounded to me Dutch. So I don't know any Dutch but uh, I know the sound of it. So, do you know any Dutch? And can you like relate w on why those two languages sound similar? Well, I think part of it has to do with sound similar. I don't know. Um, I guess we do share some similarities in sound, um, but I guess one reason could be that we might have picked some of those sounds up. All of us that left the old world eventually got on a boat in Amsterdam. Sometimes people had to spend a little bit of time there until they could raise enough money to make the trip across the ocean. Um, so there could be some influence there. I, I mean, most Pennsylvania Dutch speakers, though, I don't think sound Hollandish or sound Dutch, really. Um, you know, a lot of the Amish, you encountered some Amish, they actually speak more of a Swiss style German, like our, their Pennsylvania Dutch. Like, here's a, let's get grammar nerd here, or <laughs> linguistic nerd. So, uh, in standard German, to make something diminutive, we had C-H-E-N, Mädchen. Okay. Yeah. In non Pennsylvania, in non Amish Pennsylvania Dutch, we put C H E on the end of a word. So a cup in Pennsylvania Dutch is a kopje, but the Amish would say kopli, which yeah. in Swiss German they tend to use L I as their diminutive form. Yeah. So meitli, uh, kopli. So that has that they brought with them as well that linguistic difference. Um, I, if, if an Amish, if I speak to Amish, I understand them, they understand me, they might use a couple words differently than what I would use and vice versa, but we're intelligible to each other. So mm -hmm. that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, it's not just, the language is different from region to region here in Pennsylvania, just because different regional groups came over. And as you know, in Germany, how many different dialects are there still spoken today? Mm -hmm. uh, three. Yeah. No. <laughs> There's a lot more than three. <laughs> <laughs> Three main ones, maybe. But. Did you? Sp <laughs> was there? A, was there a regional dialect where you grew up? Uh, yeah, yeah. I grew up in uh, Magdeburg, and um, in Magdeburg, it's uh, people assume it's in East Germany, and uh, they have like all this uh, Eastern uh, uh, sound to, uh, to it. The whole language is not, but it, the whole language is the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. We have, uh, of course, a couple of special words uh, that are uh, special to the region, but in Magdeburg, actually, we speak kind of a uh, like. Uh, it's closer to Hochdeutsch than most people would assume. Yeah, it probably has to do with how far how far is Magdeburg from uh, the areas where Luther did his stuff, like Wittenberg and Eisenach and all those yeah, places. Yeah, I should totally know that. But uh, I mean, it's not it's not terribly far. Right? Yeah, it's like you know, because we've got to remember that like hours, I guess. the stand that the, the the German standard was based off of Luther's translation of the Bible. So yeah. the German that was was you know what what Luther was speaking was much cleaner, quote unquote, than what was being spoken in southwestern Germany, where a lot of my people came from. But in, if you travel into southwestern Germany, there are regional dialects from town to town mm -hmm. that are different to each other, and I think that you know plays a huge role in it. You know mm -hmm. how these groups came together and the the language kind of meshed all these different little dialects meshed into one here in here in Pennsylvania. Right. And then I'm always hearing that the Bavarian dialect is Yeah, for very example, distinct. or like Austrian German right. or yeah. And then even within Bavaria itself, you have Franconian, you have Upper Franconian, you have Lower Franconian, then you have, you know, with you have Schwäbisch and Felsisch and Saarlandisch. I mean, just right. within that region of Germany alone, there's dialects every little town has their own dialect and that's like I talked to Germans that are there it might not be the case where you're from but the big difference is you know are younger Germans only speaking Hochdeutsch or are they maintaining those old dialects and from what I heard from a lot of people and maybe you you know you guys agree out there but the younger generations 
are kind of moving away from the dialects. It's everything standard German. Oh, that's old fashioned. That's what my grandparents speak. There's no reason for me to learn that. Hmm. And that, to me, I think that's really sad. Speak your dialects. <laughs> you learn German, yeah, that's fine, but speak your dialects. That's, it's a part of your history and culture. Right. So, I, mean, I mean, that's how I feel. I mean, I'm speaking English. Whenever right. I call my mom and have a conversation with her, and she'll use some some dialect for yeah, lack regional of a better words. Term. Yeah, right. absolutely. You know, I get really excited sure. because it's this home folky sure. language absolutely. that I know. So I try to use the word. It words. shows where you're from. You right. Know, you know, and there's, right. I know some Germans aren't too. You know, the idea of showing a lot of national pride isn't that popular in Germany. And I, under, I understand why. Um, but I, I think, you know, no one's around here waving their Pennsylvania Dutch flag saying, oh, we're better than everybody else. But, you know, showing those regional differences set off who we are and in a good way. I think we should be celebrating that. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. You know, the whole idea of a lot of people always say, oh, America's the melting pot. I don't really like that term. I prefer, I'm going to use a good Pennsylvania Dutch thing. I like the term a quilt. We oh. all have different little squares, <laughs> right. and together we get sewn into one big quilt, but each little square maintains its own identity, its own color, its own you know, pattern. So I think that's, you know, that's my vision of America and why I keep speaking the language that I do. Um, I could have decided not to, and I could have decided when I had kids, I'm not going to pass this on, it's stupid, it's old, um, but I think that's, it's part of who I am, it's part of who my kids are, mm -hmm. um, you know, that we've been speaking it for 300 years. You know, as, as, as my ninth great-grandfather went off to fight the American Revolution, he went out speaking Pennsylvania Dutch, fighting for this new country of his. And when my seventh great grandfather fought in the Civil War, he fought speaking Pennsylvania Dutch. You know, I just think that's part of who I am, the heritage that I came from. It doesn't make me any less American. I think that's another misconception. Oh, you speak a foreign language, you're not American, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I just want to slap those people. I mean, when they speak, like I've been here for 300 plus years. Well, my family's been here for 300 plus years. Like I said, we've, we've helped in you know every era of history and we fought in our wars and all that stuff um, to make the country that it is. I, me speaking a foreign language, I don't think doesn't make me any less of an American or make me any less proud to be an American either. I think that's, there's something that needs to be said about that. Yeah. So, yeah. How do you feel <laughs> about that from a German perspective? about that about you know maintaining the regional dialect and maintaining german you know you're living over here and i know that your you know your accent is becoming more i guess i could say your english is becoming more american sounding um i would say that uh having a dialect a regional dialect uh, is often uh like Com uh, compared with having uh, a lack of like a higher education oh, or yeah. something. oh absolutely and, and people uh, always uh, feel like judging you for it so uh, of course there's like this desire to retain it, to uh, keep uh, a part of your identity, but there's also like the desire to uh, be the society's influence on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So some, hey, I, I know Hochdeutsch. Yeah. I uh, right. I know right. how to speak properly. And, yeah, uh, right. And uh, this is a stigma that is uh, well present in uh, Germany, and I think it is uh, present in uh, the U uh, U.S. as well. Absolutely. I mean, we the Pennsylvania Dutch were always known by the outsiders as the dumb Dutch because we weren't learning English because our English when we spoke English we had an accent, mm -hmm. you know, and we didn't sound educated. Well, yeah, I mean, that we fight that stigma, too, to a certain extent, or we fought it. I mean, it's not as bad as what it used to be because there's fewer and fewer people outside of our little region that you'll hear it by. Yeah. So there's, we, we've, we've fought that stigma, though, for years, for right. absolute years. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'll say even in my YouTube videos, if I'm speaking, you know, and I'll say like a colloquial term or something, there will always be one comment of someone calling me uneducated because well, of, of yeah. saying the word, you know, ground instead of floor or something. And it's like, well, I mean, this is yeah. kind of like a regional thing. And yeah. context is a lot of English, I think. We oh, don't I agree. have German has a lot of these very specific terms mm -hmm. uh, to refer to certain things. Whereas I feel like with English, there's a lot of context that you draw from sentences. Sure. And going with this and an educated thing, though, um, you know, I was I was talking to a friend the other day about, you know, he had some, he teaches a, a swim team and they had some foreign students on the swim team and he was having to explain to some of his colleagues, you know, just because they don't speak English well doesn't mean they're dumb, sure. right? Yeah. Of course, they're they're intelligent people, they just don't speak English well. Yeah, and so right. this, this misconception is, is definitely present. Um, you know, just because I didn't speak German mm -hmm. hardly at all when I was living in Germany didn't mean I was uneducated or dumb. It yeah. just meant I was suddenly living in a country I never thought I would be living in. Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs>
You got any more thoughts on that? <laughs> I'm good. All right. Do you have anything else? No, no. I mean, if you want to learn more about our language, there's tons of stuff out there online right now. Um, there's blogs written in the language. We have videos on my YouTube channel, of course. Um, and there's publications. I've written a couple books. We have kids' books in the language, too, to help parents that maybe want to pass it on in one way or another to their children. So the language is alive. I think that's what... Uh, I think most Germans always find that pretty interesting that this is still happening in you know the United States 300 years later. But it is. We're we're uh, yeah. we're trucking on. I think you said earlier about 500,000 people speak this language. 400,000 which are, are the Amish and Old Order Mennonite. Yeah. Right, but, but that's then the fastest growing minority. So I mean the language. Yeah, the language is still... isn't going anywhere. Right. As long as the Amish keep having kids, which they will. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the language will be around. It'll be okay. And then there are people like Doug, who I mean, maybe and uh, you know, someone within the Amish community wouldn't go outside of the community to teach Pennsylvania Dutch, yeah. but someone like Doug is reaching out and mm -hmm. trying to you know bridge those gaps and mm -hmm. teach the language. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really really yeah. special. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So all right, well that's all I've got for you guys, Doug. Thank you so much for Pleasure sitting down was with all me. Mine. We're Pleasure fighting all mine. the sun right now, yeah, so right. sorry I got a little sunny out here. But Amisha, as always, thank you for dealing with my YouTube adventures. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Please check out Doug's channel. Uh, I'm yeah. sure it would be really interesting to a lot of you guys. I'll link it in the description below. Thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome for the support you've given me, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>